When Ethiopian government troops took control of the Tigrayan regional capital of Mekele last month, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed said the law enforcement operation against the Tigrayan People's Liberation Front, or TPLF, was over. Others said the conflict had only just begun. Abiy said no civilians have been killed by government troops. Both sides have been accused of rights abuses. We've seen targeting of civilians and civilian infrastructure with heavy artillery fire. We have seen widespread looting of private property in, in many towns in Western Tigray. We've seen extrajudicial executions of individuals alleged to be linked to the TPLF, but also prominent business people. We've obviously also seen a context of massive restrictions on humanitarian access. The conflict has impacted the region. There are numerous reports of Eritrean soldiers operating in Tigray. Eritrea's and Ethiopia's governments deny it. More than 50,000 people have fled to refugee camps in neighboring Sudan. That's reignited an old border dispute between the two countries. Last week, Sudan accused Ethiopian forces of attacking its soldiers inside its border. And within Ethiopia, there are an increasing number of reports of inter-ethnic violence in other parts of the country. Last week, more than a hundred villagers were killed by an armed group in Benishangul Gamuz region. Uh, these type of incidents have been very, very frequent uh, in Ethiopia, uh, and does and, uh, and now that those incidents have claimed the lives of dozens, hundreds, uh, even thousands of people. So it really is a recurring theme. Uh, it's, uh, it has been a recurring theme for the last six months or, or a month, and that's the sad reality of it. It was mass protests in different parts of the country that brought Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed to power nearly three years ago. Before that, decades of authoritarian rule had frozen generations-old conflicts, many of them on ethnic lines. Abiy was credited with bringing in some democratic reforms. That's led some of those conflicts to start boiling over. His drive to unify Ethiopia has conflicted with growing demands of various ethnic groups who are seeking more autonomy. When you have over 100 ethnic groups in a country, you have to find ways of making things work. All right. So Abiy's, you know, move towards, you know, quote unquote unity is likely to cause more problems. TPLF is just one. The TPLF dominated the government for nearly 30 years before Abiy took over. One of the triggers of the conflict in Tigray was the postponement of elections that were due four months ago because of Covid. Now they're expected to be held amid growing tensions in 2021. Malcolm Webb, Al Jazeera. Let's talk now to Martin Plout. He's a fellow University of London and Horn of Africa analyst. He joins us on Skype from London. Martin Plout, welcome back to the News Hour. Uh, why did, if he did, why did the Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed misjudge this situation so horrendously? Two reasons for this. The first is that he thought that uh, he had the force of the Ethiopian Federal uh, Army behind him. Uh, an, an air force that the uh, Tigrayans couldn't possibly uh, respond to, um, and that he had uh, with him also Amhara militia. So he had a very powerful force. And then from the north, he had allies in Eritrea who have also become involved in this conflict. So he was essentially attacking from three directions, from the north, from the um, east, and from the south. And he thought he could crush the Tigrayans. The second one is that he is a Pentecostalist and very much believes that positive thought is enough. It will get you by. So, uh, in a sense, there were, there were two reasons for this. Do you think the Tigrayans will carry on pushing back? And if they try to, can they sustain that? I think that's a very difficult question to answer. Uh, the indications at the moment are that there is still fighting going on. Um, how long that will continue for is impossible to tell. But they did have more than 100, maybe 150,000 uh, men under arms. And the tradition in Tigray is to go into the hills and fight from the hills, not to try to hold the cities. So if they do that, 
They have a long history of doing it, and there's no reason why they could not continue. The big question is, what will Sudan do? Because all their supplies of essentials like fuel and food and ammunition will need to come in from Sudan. Can that be sustained? Will Sudan allow that to be sustained? That we don't know. So clearly this maybe never started out as a law enforcement operation. That was what it was labelled as. It sounds as if you're painting a picture describing this descending into almost a civil war. Well, it, it, no, it's not a civil war. This is an international war. You already have the Eritreans involved. Uh, the United States has made it clear that they believe the Eritrean forces are involved. Uh, Britain, uh, sort of off the record, accepts that this is the case. So do the European Union. So there's little, little, in, little indication that's not true. Er Eritrean forces are involved. So you are in. This is now a full-scale war uh, on three fronts um, involving more than one country. That's terribly dangerous. Um, for, for the Tigrayans, but also for Ethiopia, because they, they also withdrew troops from Somalia. That destabilized Somalia. They pulled people out of other areas which were tense, like Benishangul, which has now seen more than 100 people dead with ethnic violence. Now, how much can that be laid on at the door of Abiy Ahmed? Well, I think quite a lot. Martin Plout in London. Thanks very much.